Hey everyone, it's Jeff and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, so recently, a lot of trade rumors popping up because deadline's approaching. And I wanted to focus on Victor Oladipo for today's video because he's probably like the biggest name that's available for trade or is like very likely to be traded. And most recently, it was the Golden State Warriors who are rumored to be interested in Oladipo. And let's just give some quick like context real quick. So Oladipo, he's on an expiring deal worth $21 million and he rejected a two year $45 million deal from the Rockets earlier. So it's clear that he wants either a deal that's longer than two years or it's more than roughly like $22 million annually. My bet is he wants something that's both longer and worth like probably the same amount. So um, let's think about if he could fit on the Warriors. I think like theoretically, if Oladipo buys into whatever the team is asking him to do, he's actually a very team-friendly player. And back in 2018, he was a borderline top 10 player in the league to me. Not quite top 10, but like most certainly in like top 15 conversation for sure. He was averaging around like 23 points, five rebounds, four assists, shooting 48% from the field, around 37% from three, and like roughly 57% true shooting, which are great numbers at the paces of the playoffs. And you know, like the Warriors, they can definitely use another just perimeter off the dribble threat who can just like create something out of nothing consistently and just be a dynamic shot maker and playmaker. Plus, Oladipo's always been a very good defender and even this year with the Rockets where he's on and off the court, I still, I still think his defensive like play, even if his effort is inconsistent sometimes, when he really gets it on, he's still pretty good. Um, like he was all defense back in 2018. So yeah, definitely like you can see why the Warriors would be interested. Now, of course, if you are going to trade for Oladipo if you're the Warriors, you would have to trade either Draymond Green or Andrew Wiggins or Kelly Oubre plus like Kevon Looney and Kent Bazemore in order to match that salary because the Warriors are over the salary cap. So, But if I'm the Warriors, I wouldn't give up either Andrew Wiggins or Draymond Green just because I think both of them have been better than Oladipo this season. Because like this year, Oladipo's stats are really similar to his like the raw stats he put up in 2018 because he's averaging like 20 points per game, five rebounds, five assists. But the biggest difference, and it's just really obvious, like you can just you can just see, is the efficiency. He's shooting below 40% from the field and like 33% from three. And his true shooting is around like 48%, which is very bad. And he's taking a lot of shots with the Rockets this year where on a competitive team, I don't think those shots would have flown. Like they were objectively just bad decisions. They were contested early in a shot clock or he just forced something up. And you get the sense that like he's doing it right now in the Rockets because it is Houston. He really doesn't really have much desire to stay there because he's made his desire to play Miami known like quite a few times. And he's kind of almost like just trying to get his numbers to prove that he's still a legit NBA player, which, you know, he, he is. And so the question is, if he can get back to like 2018 form because he's still only like 29 years old. But it's important to remember that he hasn't played at an all-star level since 2018, basically. 2019, he was named an all-star before he got injured. But even in that season, like he wasn't playing particularly well. Like he was just named an all-star because of how good he was last year. And he had a major like soft tissue injury. He tore his quad tendon right off the bone. And if any of you guys like have suffered a soft tissue injury before, like you've strained a hamstring or something like that, you can empathize with how debilitating and just you lose so much um, explosiveness afterwards because your muscle just feels weaker and you just don't have as much faith in it. And I think if you just watched um, an Old Depot game this year with the Rockets, like he just doesn't have the same burst and explosiveness as he did before with the Pacers. Now, because he's still a good basketball player, he's still managing to put up numbers, but it's pretty clear from deficiency that like he's having, he's struggling to get to the places he wants to go now because he's lost a bit of that athleticism. So if you're any team that trades for him, is kind of taking on a bit of a gamble if you sign him to a long-term deal because you're betting that he's going to be able to be better than this Rockets level. I think it's pretty unfair to expect him to get back to Pacers level, but you're betting that he's going to be somewhere in between. And if I'm being honest, I would not be optimistic about that happening just based off what I've seen so far. But then again, like, I do not know the exact specifics of his medical situation, so it's hard to give a definite and concrete, like, prediction on that. But back to my point though, I really do think that Wiggins has been better than Oladipo this year because Wiggins has been making shots more often, he's just been more efficient overall, and Wiggins' defense has improved a lot. And I think you have so much more room to grow with Wiggins than you would with Oladipo 
And plus, Wiggins is on a longer deal. Well, I mean, technically, if you get Oladipo and you re-sign him, he'd be on a longer deal, but his free agency is very questionable in terms of where he's going to go because we've seen how much he wants to go to Miami, so he could just leave the Warriors if he gets there. I also will not trade Draymond just because, you know, we've seen just how important Draymond is to the Warriors, like, you know, a thousand times, pretty much, and I'm not going to say, like, Steph Curry leans on Draymond, but it's pretty obvious that Draymond elevates Steph's game because the two just have so much chemistry together. Like, you just see them pitching the ball back and forth when they're doing the two-man game, and I just would not swap that for Oladipo. And even with Kelly Oubre, like, Oubre's been really good the last few, like, weeks, basically. His last, like, 15 games have all been really good. So, like, once again, I just, I don't really see a need to trade for Oladipo here if you're the Warriors, and they're probably just doing their due diligence and being interested, I guess, but I don't think they should go through with this trade if they're the Warriors. Um, another team that has come up recently is the New York Knicks, who there's reports that they are, they're aware of how good Oladipo could be. And it's like, okay, <laughs> congratulations, New York, I guess. And I think this one makes a bit more sense in the Warriors, just because the Knicks still do need, like, just a dynamic perimeter playmaker. Because they have, like, RJ Barrett, Derek Rose, Alfred Payton, but they don't have anybody right now who can just, like, go off the dribble consistently from the perimeter to, like, basically pair with Julius Randle. And I still don't like it if you're the Knicks, just because, like, one, they've cleared up cap space, right? And if you're going to get Oladipo in, I assume you're not going to trade, like, Julius Randle to get him. And they don't really have any other big contracts. Like, they'd probably just trade, like, Alec Burks and, like, the Clippers pick swap. Because, by the way, if I'm any other team, I would not give up an unprotected first for Oladipo. Just because, like, I think in terms of objective value, he's worth a first round pick in terms of how good he is and his potential. But just because he's on an expiring contract and you don't know where he's going to sign a free agency, you would not give up a lot for him. And even if you're Miami, if you think he's going to come to you in free agency, why would you trade for him if you think he's going to come to you in free agency and just get him for free? So like that's what I think. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for teams to trade a pick for Oladipo. And that's why it didn't make sense for the Rockets at all to swap Karis LeVert for Oladipo basically because there was no need to do so. But hey, Houston did it. But yeah, like back to the next point though, um, if you bring Oladipo in, and because like I said, they do need like a just a perimeter, like, you know, scorer or someone who can just consistently go off the dribble from the perimeter in the wing. Because you have Julius Randle like causing havoc inside, but their offense overall is still not that great. And RJ Barrett, he might be that guy in the future, but right now he's he's just still too streaky of a shooter to be consistently that like 20 points per game guy from the outside. And they did bring in Derrick Rose, who's a great mid-range shooter and can get to the basket from outside. But still, not much of a shooter from the three-point line. But like my question is to the Knicks is, I also don't know if Oladipo is going to be that guy either. Because like I mentioned before here, he hasn't been very efficient of a scorer. And once again, he's only had one season in his entire NBA career where he was like this great off-the-dribble guy from the perimeter. So if I was New York, I would rather go with someone I know is more consistent and reliable and just more guaranteed to be that player I want instead of this wild card in Oladipo. And like, once again, because we know he's probably seeking a long-term deal since he turned down that two-year $45 million deal from Houston. If I was New York, I would not be comfortable tying in my cap space to someone like Oladipo, who he's still only like 29 years old, so that's not he's not old. But my point is, I just... I don't think that like the risk reward here pays out for New York, especially if bringing him in means less touches for RJ Barrett, who's been, he's very hot and cold, and uh, he has like four game stretches where he's shooting like four for 17, but he's flashed enough to the point where you're like, okay, I'm optimistic about this player, and I want to give him as much opportunity as he can handle, so he can grow and potentially be like a perennial all-star. Plus, like if you bring him in, like that's probably going to mean even less touches and like opportunity for Emmanuel quickly, who's pretty good. I've also heard of Celtics. If I was Boston, I would not. It's just like, I don't, you know, Boston has never re-signed a free agent in like forever. And if I was them, I would not go for someone who's on an expiring deal and who very obviously wants to play for the Heat. And I know that like Miami and um, Old Depot have mutual interest. But once again, if I was Miami, I wouldn't trade for him just because if he really wants to come, he's going to come in the off season. And number two, like, honestly, I just... I just don't really think Oladipo is that good right now. And I wouldn't just, I just wouldn't trade anything of value for him. Like, I would rather keep Duncan Robinson, since that's who you'd probably be trading, like, and Kendrick Nunn and Egodala, than get Oladipo. Especially if I think that you can get Oladipo in the offseason. 
And let's say it's like a Paul George situation where the Lakers thought they can get him, but he didn't end up going. I don't think it's that big of a loss if they don't get Oladipo because like once again, I don't think like the upside here with him is that particularly high. I've also heard the Nuggets. Um, I would just rather just see where it goes with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. I think there's a better chance of one of those two guys being Jokic's like second dude than Oladipo. And plus Murray just ended it like he went into the All-Star break on like a super hot streak. So like I get I guess the point that I'm trying to make is if you're a team and you want to get Oladipo, I would just wait till the offseason because I don't think there's a team out there that's desperate enough or just really needs someone like right now in order to save their season and save their franchise. Like maybe the Timberwolves, if they want to show Carl Anthony Towns, they're committed to winning, but that just doesn't make that much enough sense to me either because you already have Anthony Edwards and Jared Culver to like work on. Plus Malik Beasley, who's I know I know he's like suspended, but still, and D'Angelo Russell. And the Mavs have been winning recently again. And the Mavs can't trade any picks to get Old Depot anyways because of the Porzingis trade. And even if they did want to trade something of value for Old Depot, I just wouldn't risk it for someone who's on an expiring deal like that. So yeah, that's the end of this video, I guess. Old Depot, um, I think in terms of just like objective value as a player, I think he's worth like a first round pick at least. But just because he wants a long term deal for a lot of money at he's not a young age, plus with the injury questions, and you're betting on him to, you know, improve and get back to where he was before, it's just too much risk for me.